There's no standard. There's no one way to do things. Whenever you cut into a new board, you kind of have to study the grain, see what it wants to do. It's kind of meditative and it takes forever. The passion is important to me. I want to be creating, always. I didn't think I loved woodworking really at all until <laughs> um, maybe a few months ago, actually. My favorite moment in woodworking, uh, I gotta say it's the moment of driving back from the lumber yard with a truck full of wood and then you're just like, this, this pile is gonna turn into something amazing. There's so many different types of wood out there. They all act differently. They have different colors. They have different ways of reacting to the environment. I think that that is invigorating. Here at Offerman Wood Shop, I'm using a lot more hand tools. You'll hear that distinction a lot between carpentry and woodworking. Carpentry utilizes a lot more power tools. There can be some snobbery about it, like real woodworkers are keeping it pure with hand tools. I actually really get the most out of both. The guys around the shop here probably make fun of me for sanding a lot. They kind of get into this zone where I want everything to be like perfect. Every scratch, every mill mark, everything out, so it's just the natural grain speaks for itself. The first stage is usually the design stage, drawing things out, sketching, then you get to go find your wood, and then you start building, and that's my favorite part. Well, I started woodworking when I was a little kid. My grandpa was a big woodworker. He got me like a subscription to Fine Woodworking Magazine, which is so precocious, because I was seven and it was totally boring. <laughs> so I ended up making skateboards and that kind of turned into my first entrepreneurial experience as a 10-year-old woodworker. <laughs> I'm drawn to woodworking, I think, because there's a story in wood. When you start to see sort of what's underneath in that wood, that's a really exciting time. No matter what kind of wood you're working with, straight from the forest or it's from the lumber yard, it's an organic material, so it's always going to be changing and moving and um, adjusting to its environment. It's always sort of a mystery being revealed. I went and bought a bunch of poplar. He just gave me these tree trunks, and he was like, oh, there's a few bugs in it, but you can treat it, Lee, it's gonna be fine, like, you know, whatever. <laughs> so I'm cutting it up on the bandsaw, and I'm like pushing them through this enormous blade. I'm like deathly afraid of worms and bugs, like lifelong fear, but I'm just trying to be butch and keep going. <laughs> and um, I make a cut, and I just see this like enormous <laughs> come out of one of the holes. And we call Michelle in because she's kind of the toughest guy in the shop. <laughs> <laughs> Michelle looked in there and we had basically, I had like cut into a nest of arboreal salamanders that live on termites, which is what Harold had sold me, a log full of termites and salamanders. The moral of the story where I'm going with this is <laughs> it turns out the termites made all these awesome patterns in the wood. The termites did beautiful work. It's true. That just becomes part of the story and what makes this um, piece of furniture a custom piece. But my other favorite thing, <laughs> my other favorite thing in woodworking is just the problem solving that you have to do. I think when I first started out, I would just mess up all the time. <laughs> I was always so depressed about how bad I was. There's good days and there's bad days, but they're mostly good days. Like I made drawers for a cabinet that were too big and I couldn't get him in. And like, that was a bad day, but that's not that bad of a day. Now, I probably mess up just as much, but when I mess up, it's just the next challenge to figure out how to fix it, and actually that's a huge part of the process. You get so lodged in it that you can't find a way out, and a lot of it is also helping other people solve their problems. This shop is much more communal in that way. The community here at Offerman Wood Shop has kind of been evolving and growing over the last few years. When I started here, it was me and Nick. Nick is so much part of this shop and is such a dear friend of mine. He has generously given it to us to keep going while he's off doing his thing, and it's like a gift. If it wasn't for this place, I might not be in Los Angeles. I'm actually, I'm pretty certain I wouldn't be here still. I think 
people should get involved with woodworking because I think it's very empowering. It's a physical, tangible thing that when you're done, it's like, I made that, that's awesome. Recently we had someone cut into a, a slab and they found parts of a fence. It was in the heartwood, so the center of the tree had grown around a fence. It's also very exciting because you're like, whoa, you know, I thought this was just a regular piece of wood and now we find um, all of this history inside. What pulls at my heart is the heirloom quality of each object that you make. We can make up our own stories sometimes about what these people are doing with these objects that we've passed along to them. You can only imagine it's going to continue living and get passed down amongst the family members, amongst generations. Everything in my house is made by someone in my family, myself, a friend. Pretty much every, I don't know, I, pretty much everything has a story in my apartment mm. and uh, I feel surrounded by my people yeah. when I'm at home. It's kind of cool to imagine that that story links back up to the original, that mm -hmm. there was once a tree that yep. grew around a fence. Oh, yeah. that was, this part's getting hokey. <laughs> <laughs>